in Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on innate behavior. In our last lesson, we learned about the response to stimulus in lower animals. We learned about taxis, which is the directional response that moves an organism towards or away from stimuli. We also learned about kinesis, which is the general response to stimuli. Instead of the organism moving in one direction or another, like in taxis, it randomly changes its motion faster or slower in any direction. Today, we are going to learn what innate behavior is and the types of innate behavior. We are also going to look at some examples of innate behavior, including human reflexes. This will surely be an interesting lesson. Are you ready to begin, students? Let us get started by defining the term innate behavior. The word innate means inborn. When we use this word to describe certain behaviors, we are talking about behaviors that do not have to be learned. They are present at birth or hatching. Students, can you think of a few examples of your own innate behaviors? Make a short list of your ideas. Students. Let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Hello again, students. I am sure you thought of many great examples. You could have said breathing, reflexes, itching, or blinking. You may have thought of other examples as well. At the end of this lesson, please ask your teacher to review your answers. Like humans, animals are born with innate behaviors as well. For example, bears that live in colder climates, like in Canada, hibernate in the winter. This means that they instinctively sleep through all the winter months. Although innate behaviors may be something we are born with or know how to do, they are not coded directly in our genes. For example, a gene that directly codes for breathing does not exist. However, there are genes that code for the development of the appropriate neural pathways to allow the behavior to be carried out. Also, there are other genes that code for the presence of the mechanism that causes the behavior to be carried out. These genes vary according to the type of innate behavior. There are three main types of innate behavior. The first one we are going to learn about is reflex actions. Reflexes are the simplest of the innate behaviors. A single action responds to a specific stimulus. These types of behaviors are nearly always protective. As you can see in the video, the hand moves away from the heat stimulus. The second innate behavior is one that is already familiar from our last lesson. It is orientational behaviors, which includes kinesis and taxis. These are more complex behaviors that result when an organism moves from an unfavorable condition to a favorable condition. The last type is instinctive behaviors. These are often the most complex, but there is always a fixed action pattern for each key stimulus. In other words, there is a predetermined behavior produced in response to a particular stimulus. An example of such instinctive behavior would be a spider weaving a web to trap food. Students, let us review the three types of innate behavior with an activity. You will see a list of behaviors on the screen. For each behavior, determine if it is a reflex action, an orientational behavior, or an instinctive behavior. You may begin now. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. I hope you were able to label the examples correctly. If you said that a blink of an eye and a hand moving away from a flame are reflex actions, then you are correct. If you said that young birds learning to fly and rodents making nests are instinctual and that cockroaches scurrying from light are orientational, then you are right again. Good work, students. Let us continue the lesson by talking about human reflex. In humans, there are two main kinds of reflex actions. Somatic reflexes are involved with our special senses, such as our eyes, ears, or pressure detectors, and produce a response by muscle. These include knee-jerk, or withdrawal reflexes from heat. Many somatic reflexes are protective. The second reflex action is called autonomic reflexes. These involve sensors in internal organs and produce responses also in internal organs. These include the reflex actions that control the heart rate and breathing rate. The way we understand how these two types of reflex actions work is by looking at the structure of the nervous system. Our nervous system is divided physically into two major components, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is comprised of the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is comprised of the cranial and spinal nerves, and each contain sensory and motor neurons. We can also divide our nervous system into two components based on their functions. The somatic nervous system integrates information from the special system to produce responses in the skeletal muscles. The autonomic nervous system integrates information from receptors in internal organs and produces responses in those organs or in other organs or glands in the body. The autonomic nervous system is subdivided again into three categories, the sensory, sympathetic, and parasympathetic divisions. The sensory division transmits sensory nerve impulses into the central nervous system. The sympathetic division transmits impulses from the central nervous system to the organs, preparing the body for fight or flight. This would result in an increased heart rate, for example. The parasympathetic division acts in opposition to the sympathetic division and prepares the body for rest and repair. This would result in a decreased heart rate, for example. That brings us to the end of our lesson. We have covered a lot today, students. We have learned the term innate behavior. We also learned about orientational behavior and innate behavior. Finally, we learned about human reflexes and how the nervous system is divided. Until next time, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.